Hey everyone, so I've not put out a Season of Discovery video in a little while, but the level 40 bracket is fast approaching us, and I wanted to make a look, quick little video on Feral Druid and what we can anticipate for the level 40 range. I also wanted to just find out from you guys, maybe in the comment section if you want to comment down below, how you've been enjoying Feral being relevant in Classic at the level 25 range, because we're bringing Wild Strikes, right? We're bringing wild, uh, Wind Fury to a group, which Alliance has never had, and... Horde doesn't get until later, so we're actually very desirable. Also, our damage is fantastic. So not only are we very desirable, but also our damage is really good, and we actually just get to be Feral Druids. We don't have to off-tank or uh, play Resto in raids, right? Like you have to in Era. You actually just get to be a pure throughput Feral DPS, which for me has been phenomenal, and it's exactly what I would kind of want from Sod. So I'm curious what you guys think in the comments down below. But... Looking then at sort of uh, how we've been playing so far, so looking at Feral in the 25 range, we are already sort of playing like our end game level 60 play style. We're already power shifting at level 25, which is quite interesting actually. The fact that we're not running any Feral Druid talents, we're going 5 points in Fuhrer, which is allowing us to power shift. And then we're going our remaining points into balance because we can get Omen of Clarity, which gives us a free shred periodically. For me, it only procs on trash and not on bosses. I don't know about you guys. And then on top of that, we get a nice little bonus 5%. Oh, uh, well, uh, 5 points in natural weapons, which gives us 10% physical damage, which is really, really good. So it just beats out going pure feral combat, where I think we get 1 point in Blood Frenzy if we go just all the way in to feral uh, combat. It's just like, uh, we don't really get a whole lot there. So we've already been playing our end game playstyle there thereabouts. So for Feral, it's already feeling very complete. And I've been very much enjoying that. Looking at the level 40 range then, and how things might be looking to change, and, and I guess I should probably comment really quickly, we've also had access to like uh, Mangle and Savage Raw. Mangle is replacing Claw as our main uh, combo point generator. Savage Draw is becoming our main combo point finisher. It's incredibly strong. I'm really glad to see Savage Draw actually powerful in this range because you look at something like Tiger Fury, which on retail, Tiger Fury is a 30 second CD, but it's like one of the most powerful abilities you have, one of the most powerful single button uses. It's 30 second CD, but it gives you 20% damage increase and also gives you like 50 energy and then it resets whenever anything dies with one of your bleeds aren't active on them. So you can just get a lot of use out of it, right? Which tags you here, horrible, awful, not very good. Uh, and then you have, um, uh, yeah, and then you have Savage Draw actually being good, which is awesome. And then we have our Wild Strikes, which is making us very desirable. Next phase, we might become even more desirable. Can you believe it? So I've got some mock-up talent calculators here for the level 40 range. And leader of the pack is going to be something we're going to be able to pick up. This is our final level 40 talent point, like the final point that we can put into to anything, and it's it can be leader of the pack, right? That's going to give our whole party 3% crit chance, which I know for a lot of you, you're probably wondering like, oh, Sai, is leader of the pack really going to be strong enough to for us to go this instead of, you know, going Fura? And going Omen of Clarity, etc. And maybe getting some natural shapeshifter and whatnot to help we uh, power shifting and stuff. Yes, unfortunately, like, just being able to buff your whole group is going to be better than your individual damage. So it just, it's the way, unfortunately. So, this is the build that I'm looking at. We also get Heart of the Wild, which is fantastic. We get more intellect, but uh, that's maybe going to be less of a big deal. But we get more strength as well. We get Fairy Fire in uh, Feral form, which is awesome because now we don't have to rely on the Resto Druid for getting to press it every boss. Improve Shred and stuff like that. Cool. Blood Frenzy, where we get more combo points or chance of, of an extra combo point. That's cool. That also helps improve our playstyle, like our higher level playstyle as well, because we would normally have that at 60. So that improves things. We get Ferocious Bite damage. We get some energy reduction here and there. And you know, get bonus crit chance here. So there's some good talents in this tree. 
There are some good talents. Some things do improve our playstyle a bit. And then we just get the fact that we help the team quite a bit. But we're losing Fura. We're, we're not going to be able to power shift as much, which is really going to negatively affect us because just energy in this game. It also is going to make us less versatile in terms of switching targets and whatnot because right, right now you can... Uh, you can sort of plan for with switching targets and your uh, you can play around uh, your power shifting right like you can shift switch target you've got instant damage whereas with this you might have to plan a little bit longer in advance or if there's any sort of rng component to mob spawning and you haven't planned for it you're going to be less adaptable and switching to that target which is a pain um and then also we're losing like Omen of Clarity and Natural Weapons. Bummer. This is another talent tree that I'm looking at where we could get access to Weaving, but we'd lose Leader of the Pack, but we'd still get the main bulk of our Feral Tree and we'd still be able to Power Shift. So you'd go five points in Fura and then you'd put the remaining points in Feral Combat. You would do the exact same thing as I just showed on the previous tree, but you'd only get one point in Heart of the Wild and you wouldn't get Leader of the Pack. In this, the Intellect Increase would be more beneficial and fantastic. But everything else is pretty much the same. And then the final tree is very few points in Feral and basically playing how we are now. You're getting Omen still. You're getting your Fura. And then you're putting the remaining points in... Well, so you get Fura, then you put a bunch of points in Feral, then you put your remaining points in Balance. And what you're basically unlocking here is Sharpen Claws. And then that's it you go on to balance or i guess if you want to look at it as you get fury you get omen of clarity and then you go okay what have we got left for feral and that's where you get to you get to shaman claws you could take two points out of natural shapeshifter and go into like swiftness or something or like whatever else here but this row is pretty like meh for feral uh cat that is charge and stuff like whatever so you would most likely just go natural shapeshifter which allows you better uh, power shifting opportunities because of the mana reduction now these are like three potential builds we could play i think if you want to be selfless then you play leader of the pack or if you want to big brain it you bring two feral druids and you have the other guy who's definitely not as good as you are at the game you get him to be the mule and he's gonna bring leader of the pack he's also gonna bring fairy fire and he's going to do all the Mark of the Wild buffing because you don't have time for that. You've got to conserve your energy because you've got to be power shifting. So you get this you get this other clown, right? Bring like a bear tank or some some idiot. I don't know. Get that guy to do it. And then you get to play one of these for fun builds. I most likely would probably go toward the Feral Combat Fura build because I'm just really not enjoying the RNG of Omen of Clarity. And a lot of the time you're just your success or your failure is dependent on did you get an omen proc i will really miss natural weapons though if that is the case and your weaving is or your power shifting is a little bit weaker if you're not playing that omen build and you're instead playing like this feral combat build but you get a lot of benefits you get the extra combo point generation which is really good it kind of pays for omen itself right omen is allowing you to better sh like better use of shred but is also really like a combo point generator as well blood frenzy acts as a consistent combo point generator so it's arguably probably better than omen for consistent generation and then it's also going to uh uh yeah i, I don't know i mean you're not going to get the shred benefit but then you can get like improved shred here which i don't know we could talk a lot more about this but those are just the potential builds there that i wanted to show off and then i wanted to show you really quick about some information here if you're unaware so we're also going to have some changes to Crowd Pummeler, which if you don't know, Feral Druid uses this weapon in Classic Era where you get it from Nomragon, it has three charges, and you get 50% increased attack speed for 30 seconds. You cycle one charge after the other, so you get 90 seconds in combat of um, increased attack speed, and then you would normally switch to like a regular weapon, right? You'd switch to whatever the Fist of the Wild um, alternative is, at the higher uh higher level maybe you have atiash or something and then uh they're changing it to no longer having any charges but being a three minute cooldown so you are going to be locked into only 30 seconds of improved attack speed and then for the remaining length of combat you're going to have to switch to a regular weapon if you can be bothered with that stuff if you can't be bothered with that stuff then you just work out pummeler all the time but it will be less efficient it's also going to be allowed to be used on paladin and shaman so if you didn't 
already hate paladins enough because they always give you the wrong buff there's two of them bro like how am i only uh, why do i have wisdom like what's it, uh, now they're also going to be stealing your weapon so that's nice but i think this is a cool change i think it's a cute change i think two hand enhance could be really cool and for paladin that could be sick like big red paladin damage so i'm pretty cool with that it seems pretty neat those are the changes happening for crowd pummel you're still probably going to want a weapon i'm hoping that blizzard is also going to have the foresight to introduce a weapon similar to fist of the wild but that's in the level 40 range if not this will still be this will still be our abyss i would be very surprised if anything other than this is our abyss if all we have as options is this crowd pummel and then just some random like regular weapons that just have stats on now we also have access to Wolf's Head Helm, which is probably going to be a very big gold maker at the higher level, um, or the, in the next bracket. And this is going to give us 20 energy whenever we shift into cat form, which means we're going to get 40 from Fura, 20 from Wolf's Head, puts us up to 60, and then 20 on the tick. So you're going to go up to 80 energy, which means you can double mangle and then weave. And so we're going to be playing... Uh, well, that's if, of course, you are not the leader of the pack mule. Um, which if you are then unfortunate, but at least with Wolf's Head, you're going to get 20 energy regardless. And then it, and then that's like the conversation for me that's, that's to be had is like, is Wolf's Head going to be worth using if you're playing leader of the pack? Cause you're going to get 20 energy on the weave plus the tick. So you'll go to 40 energy. So you get a mangle, not, not more than that. And then re you know. Then realistically, it's like, well, do you get improved shred, right? If you're playing this build, do you go improved shred, and then you just wait for one more tick and then just shred because that's going to be more damage than mangle. I don't know. That's that's a, that's a conversation to be had. This is something to look at and to consider. But one thing is for sure is that if you're playing this leader of the pack build and then you get in Wolf's Head, Wolf's Head is going to have way lower value. And I don't know, for me, I don't know if I'd necessarily even even use it. It might not even be worth having. But if you're playing like the non-leader of the pack build and you're going for like your own logs and you can be selfish, then Wolf's Head plus this will just be fantastic. Either of these will just be phenomenal. So that's something cool to look forward to. And, uh, and then apart from that, I mean, just in terms of runes and things I'd, I'd hope for... I'd hope to see, I'd like to see something changing for Tiger's Fury. I'd like to see Tiger's Fury having even an ounce of the strength that it does on retail. Maybe we get like, maybe they uh, add on a longer cooldown to it, but maybe they make it uh, give us like damage increase or they increase the amount of damage increase and, and may maybe make Tiger's Fury free, but it has a 10 second CD or something. So at least we're using it. And at least there's some kind of avenue of like timing it correctly with when you think you're gonna have the most burst in an energy window within like that 10 second time frame. Uh, even if they did something like that, just remove the energy cost. Cause, cause realistically that's why we're not using it because we're so starved for energy and we don't have a whole lot of ways of getting additional energy apart from weaving. And even then it's like, this isn't as competitive as anything else savage roar and like mangle and rake and whatnot tiger tree is just ineffective so maybe remove the energy cost but add in uh add in a uh, better effect on it but add a, a cd to it that could be an interesting rune maybe they could do something that gives us swipe in cat form or like brutal slash or something in cat form so we get a some access to aoe because at the level 40 range we're just going to be hurricaning that's going to be our aoe is you're going to leave cat form you're going to hurricane and then you're going to go back into cat form which is f like great and it's actually quite fun i do i don't mind the, the hurricane gameplay like i, I do like it but we're, i don't think we're gonna have box skin at the level 40 range i need to uh, i need to double check I, I forgot to actually check that before recording this video but i did i do remember looking recently i don't remember seeing box skin at the level 40 range i could be wrong if i am wrong you just box skin hurricane if not, you just normal hurricane. For those wondering why you need to bark skin, bark skin reduces the um, the knockback on spell casts. So if you're channeling hurricane and mobs come in, you pull aggro because you're doing so much damage. Mobs come and hit you, it just trucks your hurricane and it and it's over. If you use bark skin beforehand, then you can get the full guaranteed cast of hurricane and you're happy. So that's probably gonna be access to our AOE there with just Hurricane. I'd love to see maybe some Feral AOE as well. So we could do like a big AOE Hurricane burst periodically. And then generally we would be looking to do some kind of burst on Feral with or AOE with like Swipe or Brutal Slash or something. 
Lastly, another thing that I would maybe like to see for a rune is just making our gameplay that little bit better where we can switch targets and our combo points are retained on us, not the target. That way we have more adaptability uh, or versatility in being able to target swap. You look at something like Logos Jet, for example, and it's just being able to swap there and not worry about having to lose combo points and whatnot would be really nice. So I would I would love to see that. Uh, apart from that, I, I don't know. I I want to I'd want to keep things like classic oriented. I wouldn't want to make too many changes where it no longer feels like classic. But things like that would be nice. Uh, let me know in the comment section below what you're thinking or hoping for with talent points. Uh, sorry, with runes. Maybe the devs have already thought about how we'd be spending on talent points, and they've already thought of a solution to the the problem of leader of the pack and no longer power shifting maybe they do a rune that really helps us out somehow but isn't so op that we have 100 energy every time we weave or something you know like something just reasonable uh that can allow us to get into the feral tree but also and like provide for our team but also not completely lose our gameplay of power shifting for me i don't actually really like power shifting that much like i would actually be cool with never having to power shift again but the fact that it's the most optimal way of playing Feral is like, well, I'm going to do it. But uh, yeah, it'd be nice to see um, nice to see some changes there somewhere along the line. But let me know in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. And if you want to see more Feral Druid videos on Sod, like boss guides or something or whatnot, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to make them for you. All right, thanks for watching. Take care.